and welcome back once again to AR77. Thanks for joining me yet again on a day where we have not one, not two, but three lovely Glock pistols on the table in front of us. We have the Glock 17 Gen 4, the Glock 19X and the Glock 19 Gen 3. All three of these are Umarex pistols uh, and the reason they are on the table today is because we're going to do a bit of an experiment. We're going to do a bit of science today. Uh, before we get into that, please do like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you do like the video, if you do think it's worthy of sharing, if you do think the channel is worthy of your subscription, um, and if you do think it's worthy of your subscription, please also do uh, shoot one at that bell uh, and receive all further notifications of any new releases that I bring to the channel. That having been said, um, once again, I thank you for your comments. Thanks for getting involved. Thanks for having a chat and a bit of discourse through the YouTube comments with myself and with each other, which is what brings us to the table today. You noticed the slightly clever use of the word breach. I use clever in its loosest term, of course. Um, in the title of the video, we're talking about a breach of trust. Do these guns lie to us? Do some of these guns, or some of them, pretenders? Are they receiver deceivers do they not operate how they should or how we would like them to as replicas i know that a couple of you got into a bit of a debate i, I, I was going to say heated but it wasn't heated it was slightly warm uh, a slightly warm debate about how these um air guns kind of operate not just the glocks but i've got the glocks out on the table because there's obviously a shared similarity between these these three guns and i want to show some differences on as much of a blank canvas as i could as to how they work i thought it'd be interesting to investigate because a couple of you were talking about well actually does the blowback serve any purpose on these guns uh, the two people who are having the conversation you'll know who you are uh, if you want to chime in in the comments that's great i won't name you in case you don't want to be named but you'll you'll know who you are and i want to be kind of scientific about it i'm not going to take sides i'm just going to work through it with the guns and see what kind of outcome we we achieve so this isn't about um how they fire it's not whether they're double action single action it's more about whether the blowback serves any purpose other than purely cosmetic i guess you could narrow it down a bit further than that into how does a round of ammunition find its way from the magazine, not magazine, that's a new word, um, from the magazine into the barrel uh, or into the breech, the rear of the barrel, if you will. That's what we're kind of looking at today. So we can eliminate one of these guns. This is the Glock 19 and this is a double action only pistol. I should point out at this juncture, there's no CO2 in there. There's no um, ammunition in any of these guns uh, yet. So this is a double action only gun. You pull the trigger like that and it shoots. The slide doesn't move. So we can't really get in there and have a look at the workings of that gun at all. So we're going to put that off the table. Uh, the way that that works isn't really conducive to the conversation because it's not a blowback gun anyway. So we'll, we'll get rid of that one for a start which leaves us with these two the 19x and the block 17 gen 4 right let's get into it there's no co2 in either i'll just show you that straight away uh different magazines for each gun uh, as you can see the block 17 is a little bit more of a kind of a realistic mag whereas the uh, 19x is a bit more of a, a kind of a typical uh magazine from from one of these Umarex guns that's like a tier two gun that I've mentioned about in uh, some of the other videos, like the, the MMP and the uh, VP9. It's clearly an air gun mag. You can clearly see the uh, the channel there for the CO2. I did say I'd show you there's no CO2 in these, didn't I? Nothing down there. There's no ammo in there. What we're going to do then is we're going to load around into each of these magazines. And then we're going to rack the slide on each of these guns and we're going to see what happens to that round. Um, let's go with the 19X first. So for this one, it loads in at the top. So I'm just going to pull that follower down a tiny little way, drop around in there. And you can clearly see, if we focus, that there's a little round in there. I'll come back to this mechanism shortly. We'll talk about that. Don't you worry. So put that into the gun. Okay. And then we're going to rack the slide. There we go. Now we're going to drop the mag, 
And what do you know? You've still got a BB just there at the top of the magazine. So that stayed in there. All right, let me just drop that back out again and put that out of the way. Let's do a similar thing with the Glock 17 Gen 4. So this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and hold it back and drop in a BB like that and just let it follow all the way down. Hopefully it don't push it out of the top. Very good, so we've got a round in there. Let's put that into the Glock 17 Gen 4, like so. Then I'm gonna wrap the slide with this one. That's done. Now I'm gonna drop the mag. So out comes the mag, and look at that, no BB. So I'm gonna gently pull this slide back if I can, and hopefully the BB isn't gonna drop out. So apologies if you can't see this very well. Look at that. The BB is right there in the breech. You can, sorry, I keep knocking my camera, but you can clearly see there's a ball bearing in there, right in the rear of that barrel, ready to be shot out of the gun. So I'm gonna take a very technical tool here, and I'm gonna just drop it gently with its own weight into the uh, barrel, and we'll get our, uh, get our BB back. We'll call him BB-8 for the sake of the video. <laughs> there he is. So, difference in operation. What's happening there? Well, let's go back to the Glock 19X and what happens with this magazine. Now what we can do here is I can show you into the bottom of the gun. I've got a light here. And if I, all right, let's, let's see if we can do this. If I shine that light in there, you can see that there's kind of a piece of metal just running across the top there. I hope that comes out okay on, on camera. And as I pull the trigger, that piece of metal moves towards the front of the gun. Okay. Now, if you're really careful, if you look at the sort of the rear portion, again, I'll try and light that up as best as I can for you. Just watch right at the rear of the gun. Did you see that? I'll do that again. It might be too quick. Uh, let me see if I can do that again. Yeah, I've got my light on strobe here. Hang on. No, it's just that the battery is going. So have a look right at the rear there. I don't know if you saw something just sort of jut out. Now, again, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a manufacturer of these guns. But here's what I think is happening. I think that that thing that pops out like that hits this piece here like a striker and that releases a bit of CO2 from the CO2 valve. I think at the same time, you have your BB in here and the metal piece in here that we showed you, that I showed you, is it, it kind of accesses that and it pushes this forward so that as the CO2 is released, so too is the BB out of the front of there. So only as the trigger is pulled does it push the BB into the breech and therefore it's picked up by the CO2 and taken out of the front of the of the of the muzzle of the gun. Please, please, please tell me if I'm wrong about any of that. I'm happy to be wrong, happy to be educated once again. Just let me know if I'm if I'm just spouting crud. But that seems to me to be a logical way that that gun works. Now it's a kind of a double action gun, but if you rack the slide, it does you get a bit of take up and then there's a wall and then it breaks. So it does make it easier. It seems to, that blowback, make it a little bit easier each time that happens. So what I'm thinking is all that is doing is kind of cocking a bit of an internal hammer here for that, or that striker, whatever you want to call it, so that you're not doing everything in that one trigger pull. When, the, when you cock it like that, you're just making it a bit of a lighter pull before then it breaks. That's what I think is happening there. Okay, apologies about that. What I discovered then was 
that kind of striker piece was kind of still sticking up um, at the back and the, the magazine was hitting it. Uh, so I'm not sure why that happened, but glad I solved it. And we are back to our normal broadcast. Okay, so that's the way that that is working. When we come to the 17 Gen 4, it's a slightly different kettle of fish. And to kind of demonstrate that, I'll show you by taking the gun uh, apart. So let me just drop that down. Okay. Uh, we'll take that out there. Take this piece out here. We'll take, uh, yes, we'll take that out of there. Uh, and we're left with our kind of our slide there. And we'll also take the magazine. So if I were to, by the power of video, just pop a BB in the top of the magazine there. What happens is when you put that into the gun, obviously, let me show you here, it protrudes. So it sticks up like that into the kind of the slide. What happens then is, if I just take that back out again, <clears throat> when this is charged with CO2, um, obviously it's single action. So pulling the trigger once doesn't do anything. But when you, let me try and show this to you as, as, as well as I can. You can see on the, on the under, underside of the slide there, you've got a little rod, a little kind of hooking piece. When you rack the slide, your slide comes back over the magazine and as it comes forward, it's easier to show you this way, as it comes forward, that hooking piece hits the top of the BB and pushes it forward and it flies off the table or it pushes it forward into the kind of the breech, into the rear of the barrel there. So that hook pushes it into position first and then when you pull the trigger, all it does is release the CO2 and that shoots the uh, that shoots the the BB out of the gun. At which point some of that CO2 also throws the slide back. It rolls back over the top of the next round and as it comes forward, it again picks up. I'm, I'm not demonstrating this very well, but it picks up a, another round from the top of the magazine and puts it into the rear of the barrel. Different mechanism, and I would say that that is probably a more realistic mechanism uh, out of the two types. If this was a, a, a real kind of nine millimeter, let's say, you'd have a, a bullet in here, uh, and it would it would find its way up. It would be kind of guided up and and, and out into the breech or into the chamber or whatever uh, each time that gun was fired. So this is a kind of a way of replicating that, which is a bit more realistic because at least the slide is kind of serving a purpose and guiding that, that BB up into the breech. Whereas with the 19X, it does appear that the blowback, other than perhaps cocking that kind of internal piece at the back there, it isn't guiding or feeding the BB uh, into position. So it's slightly less realistic. Does it make a difference? Not necessarily. Um, do you have a preference? You may well do. I'm not sure if I do. I know that I prefer the look of that mag. I know that I prefer generally the way that the X, sorry, that mag, I prefer generally the way that the, uh, the, the Gen 4 works as opposed to the 19X. But they're both lovely guns, both great fun to shoot. I'm aware that I might have kind of um, completely uh, scrambled your, your brains by trying to describe that. In a, in a poor way. Uh, so hopefully it was kind of relatively clear what I was getting at, uh, and hopefully it kind of made the point uh, and cleared up any misunderstanding. I do think it's great when people get in touch on on the, uh, you know, via the comments with each other and with me. I quite like the fact that we don't all feel like we have to agree with each other uh, all the time. That's not what humans do. Uh, I prefer it if when people do disagree, they disagree politely, uh, but I'm not here to tell you how to behave. I'm not here to control you. I think the conversation between those two kind of subscribers was was there and then done within within a few minutes as far as I can as far as I can see. Um, but I'm all about us kind of sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, agreeing, 
disagreeing, uh, challenging each other uh, diplomatically. That's all food for the soul. So I hope that cleared it up. I hope that uh, demonstrated what we wanted to demonstrate. Uh, I hope it was clear enough and illustrative enough uh, for you all watching. And I hope some of you found it in some way interesting. Once again, please do like, share, subscribe, hit that button, hit that bell button rather. Uh, as always, please do take care, stay safe, all the very best. Bye. <laughs>